Welcome to our continuing series on advanced machine learning tools for engineers. And now we're moving into a next stage where we're not just looking at stuff like an image, but we're looking at it in sequence. So time series data. With me, I have a new assistant, Delaram Ben Ami. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Matt. Uh, my name is Delaram. I'm a fourth year PhD student in ECE and I work on echo analysis, which is video data. So I've worked with RNNs before, and today we'll be talking about how you can look at sequence data for your applications. Great. Well, let's start with a uh, general architecture description at very high level. And we did just look at convolutional neural network, which had two blocks. It had a feature block involving convolution to extract features from derived filters that come from the data, and then we fed it to a fully connected network, an MLP network. So we can start to think of how we can take these blocks of material, blocks of networks, and then start combining them. And so what the next step is to look at how we could think of networks that are looking at different time steps. And that leads us to recurrent neural networks. So let's look at an example, human activity. So speaking of extracting features, as, as Matt, as you just said, for with CNNs, we can extract spatial features from images, whereas with RNNs, you can uh, learn from your sequence data. So here's an example that puts the two together. So imagine you have a video uh, sequence, which is a sequence of frames, and you want to know what sort of human activity it is. So the, here's an example video of that. So the, the, the classes, the output classes are... Uh, uh, so it's a sport data set, so you got an output class such as hammer throw, you got climbing, you got uh, different, like you got soccer, different ball sports. So what ha what's happening here is that the frames are fed into a CNN, the spatial features are extracted per frame, and then aggregated and fed into a, through an RNN, which will then tell you what sort of activity is, is happening in the video. So just to clarify from my own mind, are you saying that we are going to do CNN on every frame of the video and then have a library of frames and then that library is passed to the RNN? Or are we doing CNN at that time step and then doing it right away, RNN and proceeding, or are they different separate blocks? There's, they can th be thought of as separate blocks, so the first option would be accurate. And uh, the, the only catch here is that when, you're, when you have that CNN that all the individual frames are being fed through, the, the weights in that CNN block for the spatial extraction is usually shared amongst all the different frames. Okay, so that, that would work really well if the um, frames weren't all that different in the sequence. That's correct, yes. Okay, so let's go on then and look at another example. And this one, everybody will love. Please, take it away. So another application of RNNs is in forecasting. So this particular graph we're looking at is uh, the, house, the price of housing in Greater Vancouver from 1977 all the way to 2017. So and then here, for example, you can see the, uh, uh, the 2008 crash. Uh, let's let's imagine you want to predict the, the the price the future price of housing. So another another thing you can do with with RNNs is that you can take the sequence of data, which would be the average price of housing per year, and then forecast what the price is going to be right around uh, this area. So I have a question uh, just based on what you said. Supposing um, the dog ate my paper, and there was a piece of data here missing. So could we use RNN to predict into the data and could we use it to predict backward and combine the predictions to fill in? Absolutely. That would be the concept of bi-directional RNNs when you have information both from the past and future. And that's another thing that people do with RNNs. You can, you can extrapolate or interpolate data, or missing data, in order to fill out or like complete your data set. All right, let's go to a, a yet another example of temporal data. Tweet, tweet. 
Uh, so let's look at, you guessed it, Twitter. I mean Twitter. And so here we're looking at sentences and words. We're not going to do this in great detail, but let's put in a keyword. What, do you, what would you like? Uh, let's try house. House. All right. H-O-U-G. I can spell. That's good. Let's query it. So what's happening is that the, this browser-based demo, it's pulling uh, uh, Twitter, uh, tweets from uh, the Twitter database, and it's trying to uh, analyze the sentiments uh, around those tweets. So you can see when we put in the word house, uh, if you look closely, you, you see words such as, uh, the data points are close to words such as serene and relaxed and calm. On, on Pleasant, one, yeah. Which makes sense because, you know, house is usually associated with homey, Feelings. And you can look at the individual analyses here, but there, there's the cluster all around pleasant. So on that side, not unpleasant. So we, we can start to see, we can apply this to sentiment, to strings of um, words. Well, that's, that's really interesting. Let's go forward then into the actual architecture at a high level and the types of RNN that we can have. So on a more high level, uh, we can think of, so any sequence is a, uh, as, as, as a multiple uh, of inputs. So the, the, what you can see here on this table uh, is that there's many to one examples of RNN. The uh, ones we looked at today were video classification. So you have many inputs, which would be the frames of your video. And you have a single output, which would be the type of activity. So that's a many to one example. Another one is a sentiment analysis in tweets that we just looked at. So uh, the input would be a sequence of words, so a sentence or maybe just a passage. And the output would be, is this a positive thing? Is this a negative sentiment? So that would be the many to one. Um, we also have many to many examples. If the, the inputs and outputs are aligned, then you can, an example of that would be object tracking in video. So again, your inputs will be frames of video and the output would be the location of your object in the video. So many to many and they're, uh, they're one to, they have one to one mappings. And with the many to many that is not necessarily aligned, the example would be a language to language translation uh, model. So imagine you have a passage in English and you want to translate it into French. So you can imagine the, t the mapping is no longer is going to be one to one because you might have you might need two words in English that translate into a single word in French. So that would be the final uh, group of our high level RNN architectures. So when you say uh, aligned, I think of clocks and synchronization mm -hmm. and where we run into clocks and synchronization issues is in cellular networks. Mm -hmm. So it's well known now we have the MIMO, many inputs, many outputs at the cellular base station. So could this be applied for cellular uh, signals as well? Absolutely, yeah. This would be a great application for RN of RNNs in that context. Great.